Hey, it's Jason from Bohemia Bees, and today we're headed out to do a cutout uh, this morning on a colony that has uh, relocated into a um, client's home. So we talk a lot about swarms, we talk a lot about managing your apiary. Swarms are inevitable, it's a natural process of splitting a colony. Uh, you can do your best to manage your hives to prevent yours from swarming and losing your bees. But occasionally you're going to have swarms and occasionally feral swarms from various, uh, you know, feral colonies and, and wooded areas will swarm out. Um, when these swarms occur and they are land on a temporary location, it's a pretty easy removal for beekeepers. You can contact a local beekeeper in your area. They can come out, usually uh, scoop the bees up in a box. We have a couple videos that we show how we do that. Um, and, uh, and naturally, you know, relocate those to their apiary and, and start to care for those bees in a traditional sort of uh, managed beehive setting. However, um, sometimes when those bees are not caught or um, they're let fly, um, you know, no, no fault of the homeowners or anybody else, sometimes people are a little more afraid of what that looks like when you see a big cluster of thousands of bees on a tree. You don't really do anything or you don't notice them. Maybe they swarm out and they do their business and you don't even notice the swarm occurring. Uh, needless to say, those bees will swarm, find a permanent home in likely a structure that's a little more suitable for than just hanging on the branch of a tree. Uh, this is when a cutout occurs. So a beekeeper needs to get bees out of that structure, uh, specifically if it's a homeowner. Uh, it can create more problems than, than, uh, than they like. So this is what a beekeeper would classify as a cutout, not a swarm removal. Uh, and we are going to do a video here and show you a client that called us about a, uh, a swarm. We do uh, several of these cutouts a year. Um, not as many as a few people here on the YouTube channels that are out that do it a lot more than us. But we do a few a year and uh, we're going to show you how we approach it. Um, I'll try to talk you through the process as best as possible. But you can see what happens when you have bees that, that get stuck within an uh, actual structure of a house and you need to get them removed. Uh, some of the downfalls by leaving them there or spraying them, uh, that's a bad thing. We'll talk about that, um, you know, at, at the end of the video. But let's go ahead and get uh, get started, get our gear gathered up. It's a lot of equipment. It's pretty intensive. Not recommended for the new, bee, new beekeeper. But if you have a, someone you're working with, maybe a mentor that's willing to show you, then, you know, bring them along uh, with you or have them lead that uh, effort and you can follow and kind of shadow them. But again, it's a pretty uh, equipment intensive, time intensive, messy process but it needs to be done to try to save the bees. So let's go ahead and uh, get our equipment together and head out. Okay, so we've got a little bit of a bee's nest here. You can see in the uh, thermal imaging that we've pulled, bees are coming to go in a very slow this morning. It's a cooler morning, so they tend to be a little bit slower in coming out, which is good. Um, the sun doesn't beat down on the corner of that house, but we believe that they're down in the bottom four slats here three to four slats in the bottom corner you can see in the thermal image we just showed you um, that's what we believe the majority of the hive it's not a large hive but it could be a deeper hive but the heat signature shows that it's down in the bottom down there so we're going to go ahead and and uh, do some little bit of slight demo to get to the nest and then we'll take a look Okay, so we can see that we've gotten the shiplap off and the um, insulating barrier. And there's a, what appears to be sort of a one by six, maybe a two by six. Um, it's a little thicker than expected. We've already cut around the sides, but we're trying to pry it off the wall and naturally the bees are getting a little agitated behind there. So we're gonna go ahead and you know smoke them a little bit, maybe vacuum some bees up, but continue to kind of expose that hive. That's our, our next step is to get that colony exposed behind that wall. See how large we got. Here we go. Okay, so we've exposed the hive now so we can see what we're working with. And our next job is to vacuum up the bees. So we're gonna use our bee vac, which we have, uh, we can show in another video. 
We're gonna try to get as many bees off as possible so when we start to pull the comb out, uh, we can start to frame that up. Mainly the brood, we're just really looking for the larger brood pieces to frame up so we can get something to put back to reconstruct the colony when we bring it home. We'll continue to vacuum the bees and uh, we'll go ahead and finish up the removal. Okay, so we are done here. We've left, uh, we're gonna leave a few bees behind. Naturally, we can't get them all. There's some foragers that are still coming back. <clears throat> but we got about 99% of the bees and we're just uh, cleaning up the equipment. We're gonna head back to the apiary, try to reassemble the hive and we'll go from there. Okay, so we got lucky on this cutout. We uh, located the queen when we did our first inspection and we put her in a clip just to hold on to the colony so they don't uh, abscond and we'll release her in a few days. Okay, so our last step in a cutout is to just rehone them here in our apiary where they can uh, thrive, not in the side of a building, but in a traditional hive setup and we can manage them. We've put them in this uh, single deep. We have um, 10 frames. We did locate the queen, as you saw. You see the middle five frames that have rubber bands, have uh, well, actually four frames, have uh, some cut brood and comb and honey that we got from the cutout. The middle frame is actually a pulled frame from another colony with no bees, just cat brood. This colony took a big hit. Uh, a lot of losses in that cutout process, a lot of wet bees. Some will survive, some will not. Therefore, we have to bolster this colony back. We did locate the queen. We probably have about two pounds of bees in here. So two to three, probably three pounds of bees. That's probably a good solid three pounds of bees that were still good and viable up in that vacuum box. So what we did was we put them in this deep colony to start to kind of recover. That center frame will be for brood to emerge and bolster the volume. There'll be younger bees that can start to kind of help patch up the uh, colony. Again, we would have to reassemble the colony as best we can with what uh, we got from the cutout. So that's the steps in a cutout. I hope you enjoyed watching. Uh, let's do this cutout. Uh, hopefully we uh, answer some questions if you're considering doing cutouts. Just it's a lot of equipment, a lot of time, and it's very messy. So I wouldn't recommend it for that new beekeeper, but maybe after a few years of you know keeping bees, overwintering bees, managing bees in your apiary, you can you know attempt to do one of these cutouts or find someone to do a cutout with to help kind of walk you through the process because always can use a second hand when you're doing cutouts. Well, that's what we have here from uh, Bohemia Apiary. I hope you enjoyed our um, video on a cutout we did, and uh, you'll check back, follow along uh, for different uh, videos that we're going to continue to produce here on the eastern shore of Maryland, where beekeeping is definitely more than a hobby, it's an obsession. Thanks for watching.